Hi, I am Gillian and this is Andrew. <laughs> Andrew is my husband and I've asked him to join me today to chat about the Walt Disney World Marathon because we ran it together and I thought it would be kind of fun for us to both chat about it and um, yeah I kind of thought even though it's 2018 <laughs> um, marathon that we ran um, I wanted to do this video not only for helping anybody else kind of prepare for their um, race but just for our memories mm -hmm. as well like it was a really fun race to do and it was Andrew's first marathon yeah. so yeah. um yeah two years later we're we're on it we finally do that totally mm -hmm. on it mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is going to be a mini series um this video we're going to talk about anything pre um, race pre mm -hmm. disney and um, so kind of uh, training prepping for it um yeah, anything pretty much up until we arrive at Epcot to start the race. The second video will be the during the race and our experience with that. And then the third one will be post-race analysis, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yes, um, I hope this is of interest. Um, so, like I said, it is the Walt Disney World Marathon 2018 that was on January the 7th. Um, yeah, unfortunately, a lot of the Run Disney races for 2021 are being cancelled at the moment, but hopefully one day we will be able to go back and do another yeah, one. Because yeah. mm -hmm. it was so much fun. Mm -hmm. If you've not ran a Run Disney race before, I would say they're the funnest. Yeah. Like, you've do it. not mm -hmm. ran any other... Oh, no, you've run a half marathon now. Yeah, since, yeah. No, oh, yeah. Is that yeah. before or afterwards? It's afterwards, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But no other marathons, but it's just mm -hmm. if you're a Disney fan or a fan of fun, then a fan of fun, a fan of fun, fan of fun. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's either are you a fan of Disney or a fan of fun? Mm -hmm. Say that fast, it's fun fan. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we're going to talk about um pre race right now. Um, so we I didn't actually know about run Disney offerings yeah. until pretty much. The day that we booked it, all yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So I've been running since 2015, and it was 2017 April Mayish time yeah. that, that we, I found out about yeah. it. So yeah. it took me about two years to realise the most wonderful thing in the world yeah. existed. Apart from me, obviously. Obviously, yeah. the second most wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I found out about it and I pretty much was like, I want to do this. And we typically go to Disney January, February time anyway for yeah. a little wee winter vacay. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it kind of just meant that we brought our vacation forward, yeah. forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we booked it. So um, typically uh, run Disney races sell out so, so fast. Um, especially if you're doing a 5k, 10k or one of the challenges, it's like lightning. Mm -hmm. But we were, I don't know, it kind of felt almost like serendipity. Mm -hmm. It was meant to be. Yeah, because we, yeah, we'd only found out about it and then mm -hmm. tickets were still yeah. available. It's only for the marathon, but the, the rest of the, um, the distances and the challenges, I think, were already sold yeah. out, I think. Um, but because all that we wanted to do was the marathon, we were really lucky. Mm -hmm. um, and I I booked my one first because, well... You want to do it more than I. I was the bigger I, fan more, of the yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bigger fun fan, yeah. And I would have been a spectator if, yeah. if I hadn't got it, but I got a ticket as well, so... Yes. Yeah. So we're pretty, mm -hmm. pretty pleased with that. And, um, yeah, it's it's not a cheap race. Um, no. Definitely not. And certainly coming from Canada... The exchange rate was really bad at the time, so we reckon it was about two hundred and sixty dollars per person. Yeah, something Canadian, yeah. Canadian, yeah. yeah. Something like that, yeah. So it's pretty expensive as races go, um, but fun. Fun. Really, really fun, and well, if the medal, the weight of the medal, mm -hmm. um, is in relation to the cost of the race, then I think it kind of evens itself yeah. out. Mm -hmm. She's a beauty. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, we, we got signed up um, and I pretty much created a plan pretty much straight away. Um, we, you hadn't done a half marathon or a marathon oh, no, by no. that point. No. 
No, so 10k was the most I'd done. Although yeah. there was still like six-ish, seven months left between us booking the marathon and us running the marathon, I wanted to kind of just slowly build up that distance over the summer, over the fall, um, to be race ready for January 7th. Um, yeah, because you had run one before, I wanted to kind of just take it quite slowly and not do like a 12 or 18 week plan that you can kind of see a lot of online and just slowly build it up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I got sick and we weren't able to train for months. Um, our training went out the window. Uh, of course, you were training religiously, actually. So hard. Mm -hmm. So hard. Mm -hmm. like, I ran like four or five marathons in that time. Just training, you know. So, it was false. False. False, false indeed. Mm -hmm. No, now to be fair, um, Andrew was a reluctant runner. Like reluctant, you ran for, reluctant marathon, marathon runner. You say. ran to spend time with me yeah, rather yeah. than it yeah, was, being something that brought you joy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, Andrew is also a writer as well. So typically, when I was running or out training for any races that I was doing, Andrew was writing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, he just wrote whilst I was sick so on the sofa. Mm -hmm. So training didn't go to plan. That's for sure. I think. Um, I started training probably back up in about September, October, because we had a 10K race at that point and it was yes. hard. Yeah, we did, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the distance, we didn't get up to the distance that um, I would have liked to, but we definitely got up to high 20s. Um, I think 28 was the most we did. Mm -hmm. yeah. So ideally it would have mm -hmm. been better if we'd done at least 130, yeah. maybe one or two above 30, yeah. but we reckon about 28 I think 28 was... was... Um, Seems about right, yeah. 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 Um, I don't remember doing any more than that. No. Yeah. But that's the way sometimes these things happen in that you, you have your training plan and it doesn't go to plan, but you just do what you can do. And there was no no question that we wouldn't run it. And no, no, we just take it slower if we had to. And that's the thing yeah. I think about a Disney race in that um, it's there for fun. It's mm. not like, and I'm sure there are definitely people that run it for time. But for us, we wanted to take our time on the the race course and take the photos and ride the roller coaster and do the fun things and spend as long as we kind of could on the race yeah. itself. So we weren't running it for time. We weren't trying to do like a sub four hour marathon. It was just going to be for fun. So the fact that we were a little less trained. Of all the races for it to happen, I think yeah. that's probably the best. For us anyway, that was the best one because... Yeah, we, mm -hmm. We didn't have to run it super fast. No, no, um, we didn't. So yeah, no. Um, so yeah, training didn't go to plan. Um, but what kind of did go to plan, I guess, was nutrition. Like we mm. were really good at mm -hmm. um, being mindful of what we were eating prior to long runs, and what and we were having during the race, race the training runs, mm -hmm. um, in terms of gels and electrolytes. And um, typically, I suggest certainly to my clients is to kind of make sure that you have the gels and the electrolytes that is available on the course just so you then you've got a backup option so if you run out of a gel or you've drank all your electrolytes and you need some more then at least you can use what's on the course because it's what you've trained with and um, for us though um i don't know if we like we we still trained with like having bananas and yeah. and that kind of thing but i don't know if the gels were the same as what we were training with um i remember the jelly bellies on the course but i can't yeah, remember the those. brand but um that's certainly what i would recommend you do so we took so many i don't know if we used any of the course mm -hmm. ones anyway did we yeah i don't I know if we so. did no. um but so that's that's definitely something um, to consider. So either train with the nutrition that's going to be available in the race, or just stick with your own. So we mm -hmm. definitely did a combination of the both. Mm -hmm. um, but we we kind of made sure that we were using the gels um, and had that in our training plan as well. So we made sure that we were having the gels at the right time and kind of kept that consistent. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll talk about actual all the the. Um, the hydration and the nutrition available on the course in the, the next video and so I don't want to get into that too much but in terms of um I don't know why I'm doing this <laughs> it's like a little bird is talking with me um for pre 
race and like breakfast slash middle of the night food yeah and we we kind of had to think about what could we take with us from canada mm. or buy mm. in the u.s that would replicate the the breakfasts that we were having during training and um typically we have smoothies or something like that so it was going to be a bit more challenging having mm. been like mm. staying on site at disney we wanted to kind of simplify what we would be eating yeah. for our breakfast and try and kind of keep control of that as much as possible because all the other food that we're eating is, was going to be disney, disney food and yeah. mm. um, but do you want to Tell the audience what we had for breakfast. We had overnight oats. Sexy, I know. Um, so it was oats, water, chia seeds, protein powder. Was that everything? Banana, banana was for, for banana. both of us. Banana as well. And right? I had blueberries yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, very, very sexy very breakfast. Very sexy, yeah. But it meant that we could take most of the ingredients with us. Well, we took the oats with us. We bought the banana and the blueberries, we yeah. took the protein powder and the chia seeds with us. Yeah. So we were able to kind of control what we were eating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it's definitely hard eating anything at 2.30 in the morning. No, it's difficult, yeah. yeah. Mm. But then you know that you have to eat it, so yeah. you eat it. But mm -hmm. it was definitely hard. Um, and yeah, what we ate the night before, I think, was double portion of fries, mm -hmm. carbs. Mm -hmm. Um, and you had a mushroom sandwich burger thing. Yeah, yeah, I think that's and I think mine was kind of similar. So, yeah. um, it's not exactly the ideal no. dinner pre-race. Like, had we been at home, it would have definitely been some sort of Pasta like spag bol mm. kind of, or spag bolognese. Um, because yeah. uh, I don't think many people say spag bol. It confuses people. When oh, I say okay. it. So, some spaghetti pasta, bolognese. Pasta dish. <laughs> um, so yeah, it definitely wasn't. Um, ideal, no, but no. we at least kind of made sure that our our breakfast was was right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, um, costume. We've not talked about costume yet. Have we? No, I haven't. No, no, we haven't. No. So no. as I mentioned previously, Disney is all about the fun, all about the fun, and part of the race fun is it does seem that pretty much everybody dresses up some way in a Disney character costume. So whether that's handmade or bought, it seems like everyone's a princess, everyone's Mickey Minnie, yeah. any of the characters. Mm -hmm. um, but being British and being us, it's... It's, it, it, it's a struggle. Yeah, it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. It is a struggle. So. We wanted to embrace it to with, an extent, to an extent, mm -hmm. without being too uncomfortable. Yeah. being in costume. Yeah. So I, I was Minnie, and I will put some pictures up on the screen. Um, I made most of my costumes, so I kept my base really simple and just wore black, um, black tights, black a uh, long sleeve top, black tank top. And then accessorized with some of the the mini bits. So we just bought um, some fairly cheap um, ears from a Halloween store, and then kind of tarted them up a little bit. So I added um, the the mini bow, and mm -hmm. yours wasn't tarted up at all. So it was just mine that was tarted. Yeah, I just had the ears minus the ears. minus the bow and um, a Disney backpack, a child's backpack that we bought, like Pink. a lad. A pink, pink glittery, one. sparkly like mini a backpack. Last minute decision in a thrift store in Victoria, and we saw it and we're like, actually, that might work because we wanted something that could carry stuff as well and put things in, or like our food and um, any clothes that we didn't want to. We, we took off, we could put in there as well. So I strapped it really tight to our back so it wouldn't move around too much, and that was it, really. That was me. That was my, mm -hmm. that was me representing Disney, wasn't it? Yeah, it's so. like your costume wasn't much, the know. ears and the backpack, but it was still it fun. Was still, yeah. It was still fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I I also had a, nu a nutrition, not a, nu yeah, a nutrition, hydration belt, sorry. Hydration belt, but 
we knew that we had a lot of stuff even just the amount of gels that we were needing to take with us yeah. so the backpack mm. was it's good a for stroke of genius actually like i know there's, there's gonna be a lot of runners that be like what running with the backpack that's yeah. crazy but for us it totally works so yeah we had um our um, n nutrition and hydration and we had our camera and our charger for the camera but then uh, we also had uh, space for stripping off any layers and yep. putting them in the back. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll talk a bit, bit more about that for the, the during yeah. portion. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was definitely um, a good a good idea. Yeah. So I was more mini and you were kind of mini. Kind of. Kind of mini. Yeah. Um, but we definitely kept the base um just cons like a regular running gear yeah things we had worn many times before yeah and we bought oh. some extra layers and um, so we'd seen for the people that had already arrived in florida that it was actually quite cold mm -hmm. um like crazy cold, for cold being, I think, yeah, for, florida yeah. so we i think a couple of days before we left um we went and bought some um like earmuffs and I bought a fleece mm -hmm. um, so we just had extra layers to put on um, as we were sort of waiting um, in the corral yeah. um, and I would definitely recommend that regardless of the weather um, yeah. it's still really really early in the morning it, it's definitely cold yeah, even yeah, if it wasn't a cold snap it, like there's a lot of waiting around and um, so I would definitely recommend in, in, it's still January isn't it I mean even like I think that day it got up to like 20 odd degrees, but overnight it was cold. Really, yeah. really cold. Yeah, yeah, so, um, so be yeah. prepared for that, yeah. Definitely, mm -hmm. like if you've got some old clothes lying around, take yeah. that, but we didn't have any Not well, anything yeah. at all that we could have used as extra warm layers. Nothing that we wanted to throw away anyway. No, like we still took stuff with us that we didn't want to throw away, mm. but um, That's what the backpack was for. That was what the backpack was for. Yeah. But there was definitely um, room for extra. So we'd, we'd gone to a thrift store and bought some stuff and washed it before we took it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like I said, that our kind of base layer was the same. It was stuff that we'd already worn before we were comfortable. We knew we weren't going to get chafage yeah. or the, anything would kind of bother us. And I think that's the kind of key when you're running a marathon in particular. You don't want the clothing that you're you're wearing or your shoes to be new or something that you've not ran a lot of um, a lot of kilometres in already. You probably shouldn't wear a backpack on that logic, but um, it worked. It was okay. It didn't chief. Didn't really... It didn't, and but it was so tight on you. Yeah, it, it was wasn't like much... super tight strap around me. Yeah. So that was the only way I would have worn it. I think. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Um. So. We, yeah, for, I would recommend for all of the, the costume stuff, any race gear to take in your hand luggage if you're flying down. So we were mm -hmm. flying Victoria to Toronto, Toronto to Orlando. Mm -hmm. um, so we didn't obviously want any of our gear to go missing and then have to have a frantic buying of everything new when no. we got in Florida. Because like I said, you shouldn't use anything new on race day, even if it's the same pair of shoes or the exact same make of top you don't know if something's gonna just like itch you in a way that's gonna be really uncomfortable and then um like yeah irritate you yeah. chafe and yeah. irritate so mm -hmm. we put everything in our hand luggage and yeah. um, every single thing that we would need for race day so we had our gels our electrolytes costume clothing um our uh, sexy oats Sexy ingredients, oats, yeah. everything that mm -hmm. we would possibly need for the race itself went in hand luggage. And yeah. I would recommend that you don't feel pressured into putting it in the hold. No, we did. We did. Mm -hmm. And it was so stressful. Mm -hmm. I was, yeah, totally it was good. not worth the stress waiting in Orlando airport. No. No, what's it called? It's not Orlando airport, is it? Yeah. What's it called? Yeah. Didn't sound right. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, waiting was, for our hand luggage to come through. I think it seemed, for some reason, it took a while. It wasn't, like, I think our plane just took a while to, to get everything off, so we were waiting longer than we should have done anyway. But then we, typically, when we stay at Disney, our luggage just was straight oh, yeah, to the true. resort. Yeah. But because yeah. we arrived so late at night, this was our one and only time that we've ever picked the luggage up. So it could yeah. be that luggage 
typically takes a long time to come mm, through maybe, um yeah. but we we've just never had that experience we've always just got off the plane through cus through customs you know because no, we didn't no. Toronto mm -hmm. um straight through onto the magical express mm -hmm. so but it was a long long time that we we're waiting and it was the yeah. hand luggage case that we we're waiting for last yeah yeah well the plane was full they they needed people to do it so we kind of felt like we had to hold your ground keep yeah. your yes. case yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was so stressful um okay so we arrived with our case mm -hmm. all of our stuff on the 4th of January yeah yeah and then on the 5th of January we went to the expo um, and we were quite lucky in that well lucky is probably perhaps the wrong word because we were only only <laughs> wrong words again um, because we were in the marathon we were able to go to the expo when it was a little bit quieter because anyone that was running the 5k or the 10k or any of the challenges would have had to have been at the expo before mm -hmm. the day that we were at so um, really the only people at the expo would have been people that were just running the half marathon and or the marathon yes yeah. because on that, we on that day yeah, yeah because, because we went to the, the expo on the fifth yeah. the half marathon was on the, the sixth, sixth and the yeah. marathon was on the seventh yeah, so yeah. um i'd seen on social media that the queues were out of control like the expo was just so you painted so a, busy. you painted a pretty bad picture of it yeah. i painted yeah. it correctly well for those days. For those days, yes. We were really, really fortunate because we went on the 5th and we went in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. It was actually really, really quiet, quiet mm -hmm. compared to what it was. Um, like it was definitely still a busy expo, but um, yeah. we, so it's at the ESPN. ESPN Wide World of Sports. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and sorry, going back a step, um, from any of the resorts, there was buses that took you directly oh, yeah. from the, the, the Disney resorts to the ESPN. So mm -hmm. it was super simple to get to. Yeah. Like I said, we went in the afternoon and there was a, a fair crowd going in and coming out. Yeah, there's a lot of people outside. Yeah, yeah. a lot of milling yeah. around. Yeah. Um, but they'd split, Disney had split the expo up into two halls for that year. I think historically it'd been in one hall, one great big hall. Yeah. But this time they've done it in two so i think that perhaps also then kind of helps split mm -hmm. the, yeah. the the numbers up so for me anyway the anxiety was around get the packet picked mm -hmm. up so we headed straight for packet pickup yeah, yeah. and there wasn't a soul in sight i don't um, think we had to wait at all did we no mm -hmm. we walked straight up and we got our bag our bib our t-shirt yeah. and we had to give them the waiver to say that we wouldn't sue if we if we died hurt or hurt ourselves. So you can go to sue if you yeah, died. You can't, well, you can't pick up your pack though, mm. and, unless you have that, so don't forget it. Yeah, yeah. and they, they're, they do have um, stations where you can print it off oh, yeah, if you've yeah. not already yeah. printed it yeah. off or you yeah. have and you've forgotten it. Yeah. But yeah, you can't pick up your packet unless you give your waiver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we picked that up first. Um, your t shirt was too big, but. Even, yeah, even, yeah, it was a small and it was still too big. And I think, yeah. just a kind of side note, a lot of the races do a unisex sizing, so mm. I find that they're always much bigger than what you think they would mm. be. Like, I typically, for a unisex, get a small, but even a small is probably like a medium or a large and what I would normally wear, mm. so definitely downsize, I would say, because yeah. um, I think even my one was too big for me. I can't yeah, remember, yeah. but they were really nice. Um, yeah, really, yeah, they were, yeah, um, yeah. I think out of all the t-shirts for that year, I think the marathon was, was the nicest. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was. Um, so then we, after that anxiety had, mm. had gone mm. and we had the packet, um, we wandered around the expo. So like I said, it was split into two. There was packet pickup with all of the other branded stalls. And then there was the Run Disney merch yeah. in a different one. So we stuck with the regular expo and it had your kind of standard brands there. So there was Brooks, there was uh, Nathan, um, Raw, Raw Threads Athletic. So a lot of the kind of standard brands that you would expect to be there were there. Mm -hmm. um, and just uh, as a standard expo, there's a lot of stalls that are giving out samples of drinks and, stuff, yeah. and food. And mm. I would say don't 
do that. Like you don't know, like don't try anything new because you mm. don't know if it's going to react funny with your, like if your stomach's not going to like it. So close to the race, I guess. Yeah. We did it. Mm. <clears throat> we, we ate all the treats mm. and drank all the drinks. Guilty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but no, it was it was really good, and um, we uh, like there was a lot of really good merch there. And had it been in a for a Canadian race in Canadian dollars, it's uh, somewhere that I wouldn't then have to ship everything back with me. I probably would have bought a lot more. But yeah, yeah, yeah. as it was, um, yeah, we didn't have a ton of luggage space. No, the Canadian no. US exchange rate was terrible. And so we didn't really buy much at all. Um, no. I bought a t-shirt from Raw Threads Athletic. I don't know why I keep struggling to say the name of that. Raw Threads Athletic. Raw um, a really cute um, Beauty and the Beast t-shirt. And that was it for the main expo. Mm. It was it was a good expo. I would say out of all the, the expos that I've been to, that one was, was good. It was, it was a good selection of... Fine. Yeah, the experience was good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was mm. really busy though. Um, I remember just kind of wasn't that busy. What inside? Yeah. Was? Oh, you mean the yes. not so not the package pickups? No, yeah, yeah, the other bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Like it was pretty, yeah. pretty yeah. hard to kind of get through some yeah, that parts. Was and busy, yeah. Certainly, um, when I was trying to pick out that top, there was a lot of people kind of milling around that booth, yeah. and it was difficult to kind of look at everything. Mm. Um, but yeah, and then we went to the Run Disney merch shop. Yeah, that was. Disappointing. So yeah. disappointing. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I'd expected just actually spend quite a bit there, and mm. I wasn't planning on buying glasses or mugs or stuff. But I was thinking clothing wise. Mm -hmm. I wasn't impressed. Yeah, two mm. thumbs, four thumbs down. Where's your thumbs? Um. Yeah, I think Run Disney merch is overpriced. It was there, I think. Yeah, it seemed like it. Um, mm -hmm. It's the fit. I for my body, mm. it did not look good. Like that, there was a couple of things that I tried on, and yeah, they they fit in the wrong ways in the wrong places, and I just wasn't a huge fan of all the massive branding and um, like I think it would have been things that I would have been happy to wear around Disney, but. Thinking about what I would wear back home, mm. I don't know if I necessarily would have been, I don't know, just it, it didn't seem like it would be something that I would wear enough to mm. justify the price, yeah. but then also to be, then be okay with the, the fit. Mm -hmm. So we didn't buy. Oh no, we bought one thing. Well, for the tree. For the tree. Yeah. So um, I had seen on social media that they have little um, shoes that... Um, like a running shoe that um, you could use as a Christmas tree decoration or just as a regular de decoration. I'll insert a picture now because I had planned on bringing it through. Forgot. It's in the living room. Mm -hmm. We forgot. So I'll insert a picture now. Um, it was $27 before tax. Mm -hmm. um, I really I wanted it, but I don't, I don't know, know if it was worth it. I don't it. think it was worth that, no. no. Um, but it was I think a it, nice keepsake. And the fact that we you hadn't really got anything else or not mm. much kind of pushed us over the edge with that as yeah. well, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um so yeah, we we didn't buy much at all. No, no. Um the queue actually was pretty decent for buying the thing. Again, I'd yeah. seen it on social media oh, that yeah. people were sneaking around mm -hmm. um and the queue was hours long, but we were really fortunate. But but again at that point because everybody for the challenges or the five and the ten k had already been there, a lot of it had been picked through already. Yeah, a lot that's of true. the yeah. um, like the badges, um, and the kind of little bits like the stickers, those kind of things had all sold out certainly for yeah. um the marathon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it was later in the afternoon, I think, as well, on that day. Um, so yeah, it just it wasn't as busy, I guess, for that reason too. Just, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. yeah. Um so yeah, a little disappointed mm -hmm. by the the merch. Mm -hmm. But overall it was a really good experience. Um I think it definitely would have been harder had we been there for the challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because queues were just out of control yeah. and I think 
I would probably would have still wanted to go to both of the expos, but having to wait to get in to the, the, the main hall to the pick up the packet, mm. to then have to wait in another queue for the Disney merch, I don't think I would have bothered. It's a lot of time mm -hmm. on holiday. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. But then if that's something you're into, you're wanting to buy all the things, mm -hmm. then you just, just gotta be do it. To wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um so Pre-race, um, we stayed at the Grand Floridian. It was a bit of a treat hotel for us. We'd never stayed at a deluxe yeah. at Disney before. Yeah. I don't know if I would do it again for the race. I wouldn't know. It was it was a lot of money for two nights. Um, Not even thinking about the money, but just I don't know if it was necessary. Like, so the whole point of us staying there was because I thought it would be. Uh, well, yeah, an experience to add to the fact that we were there at Disney to run a marathon that it would make it even more special to stay at a deluxe resort. We've always wanted to stay there as always well. Always wanted yeah. to stay yeah. there. Mm -hmm. um, but the I guess one of the, the, the plus points was going to be that you're much closer to the start and the finish mm -hmm. of the race, so it wouldn't take you as long to get there. Um, but I don't actually think... It made any difference because regardless of what hotel you were coming from you still had to be at the race hours beforehand yeah, yeah. um so yeah being closer didn't mean you could leave later like you, you there were still the same cutoffs yeah but um it was really noisy at the grand floridian mm -hmm. and i don't think it was specific to the room that we had and we were looking over the lake to magic to kingdom, magic kingdom yeah. mm -hmm. um so we heard the fireworks every night and we... And the display, whatever the display is in the water. Water I display I can't think what it's called now, but... Um, and given that we were obviously going to bed early for the night of the marathon, to then get woken up at eight o'clock for the musical thing and mm -hmm. then get woken up the for the fireworks, fireworks yeah. it was yeah. too loud. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm sure if we'd stayed at one of the other resorts, we'd still hear the fireworks, but... Yeah. Um, it would be a lot fainter and they wouldn't have the water display mm -hmm. things. We woke up at one point, what is that music? Yeah, it's real music, yeah. So yeah. loud. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I'd necessarily stay on the monorail um, for a future race. I would probably, like no. stick with one no. of our standards. So um, yeah. we kind of typically like to stay the Caribbean beach or... Um, French. French Quarter. The French Quarter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they're kind of our go-to. Mm -hmm. And I think I would probably just stay there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't done it once. I don't think I'd do it again. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. like I said, even though staying at the Grand Floridian meant we're on the monorail, um, yeah, okay, it meant that we had the option of getting the monorail or the bus to yeah. the, the start line, whereas all the other resorts just had the... or all the other resorts that weren't on the monorail just had the bus, but... Mm -hmm. Um, Disney being Disney, it's they're so on it, and mm. that you that there's plenty of buses. You don't need to to wait around. And um, certainly, just from seeing people on social media, mm. it wasn't. Um, it didn't seem like a big deal not staying on the monorail. Um, yeah. Like when I think all of the receptions of the Disney resorts had a sign telling you what bus you need to get on, the times that the the buses ran. Um, so yeah, like, yeah, staying at the Grand Floridian wasn't necessary, mm -hmm. um, and we so yeah we got up super super early. I think it was about two thirty. We got up in the I morning. Think it was earlier than that, was it? <sighs> it was ridiculously early, but we needed to to, be... to be out by th three. Did we leave at three or something like that? No. Oh, can't remember. The, definitely, I had to be at the corral. I think for about five at the latest. Yeah, sounds about right. Um. Yeah. So yeah, we got up, we got dressed, we forced the food down us. Mm -hmm. Um, we had a, a small glass of water, um, and then pretty much just left. Yeah. We were definitely still half asleep by that point, but thankfully we'd packed a lot of stuff the night before or already had things laid out. So it was yeah, literally just to get up. Yeah bathroom, clothes on, eat, yeah. water, bathroom, out. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of cool walking through the Grand Floridian mm. in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. It was so yeah. quiet. It would have yeah. kind of been the perfect opportunity to get photos had we not been so like, ah, yeah. oh, we need to get up there, the bus. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because there was no, well, hardly any view around. I think we saw a couple of runners. 
Yeah, but, a couple in the lobby, I think. Yeah. But yeah. it was super, super quiet, yeah. which was kind of neat. Mm -hmm. um, and our plan had to been to get the bus. I'd heard for the other races that the monorail was actually super packed. Um, and then I, I, there was a lot of negativity on social media around the getting the monorail. So I was like, okay, let's let's take the bus, even though the whole point of staying at the Grand Floridian was to get the monorail. Mm -hmm. So we went down to where the bus was supposed to be. No buses. No buses. No, I don't know where they were. I don't know what happened. That, still, still don't know really. No, and there was no, no signs. There was no. No. Nothing. There was no one there. I found one guy who ended up helping us. Yeah. Um, but there was no one there to tell you why or what was going on. But we weren't late. No, we weren't no, we too weren't, early. No, no. But for yeah. some reason, the bus wasn't running. And yeah. um, so we. No, the guy told me. That we had to go get the monorail. So we kind of um, ran to the yeah. monorail, mm -hmm. um, just having known that there was going to be possibly issues with the monorail, and yeah. um, we kind of ran there. And actually, it was a good Quiet. experience. Yeah, wasn't one a lot of people there? Um, no, it was fairly quiet. Mm -hmm. It was actually really nice driving past the Magic Kingdom entrance. Uh, all lit up because it was still pitch dark. Because it was the middle of the night, so it was yeah. all lit up. Mm -hmm. Um, I've got some wonderful blurry pictures mm. as, we, as we went past. Um, and then same for going around the, the ball. Uh, called, what's it called? It's got an official name, the ball. Golf ball. The golf ball. The golf ball. Um, mm. Driving around that again when it's purple and then seeing all the, the walker runners walking yeah. um, was pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. It was. Yeah, it was good, yeah. It kind of felt real at that point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, got off the monorail and um, yeah, it was kind of easy then to kind of just follow the crowds and there was huge crowds. Yeah, loads of people. Huge, yeah. huge crowds yeah. and yeah, as we mentioned, it was cold and um, so we had all of our layers on at that point. And I think we actually put more on once we actually got into Epcot. Yeah, I think um, we did, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so I hope that gave you a little bit of insight into a pre-Disney race prep and experience. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's pretty exciting. Exciting times. And our neighbour is hammering. Mm -hmm. Great timing. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the next video we're going to do is from us arriving at Epcot. So our experience pre-race, kind of waiting in the crowds. Um, and then the race itself and kind of hints and tips in terms of making it the best experience certainly that we had and that hopefully that you can have too yeah. and then the third one will be the, the post race debrief yes. so yeah oh so I'm so excited for past g &A to run the race I know I'm excited too they're gonna love it mm -hmm. I know it a lot <laughs> Well, thank you very much for watching if you even made it this far. Um, Go you if you did. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well Proud of you. Mm -hmm. Good job, buddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, we will see Bye. you in the next one.